All right, you're still watching Ways Now World Tuna Day 2022. Rich in omega 3 minerals, protein, and vitamin B12. Tuna has various other advantages, but the super fish is a victim of its own amazing qualities and nutritional properties, threatened as it is by the overwhelming demand from the human population. Now, according to the United Nations, um, latest data shows that 33.3% of the stock among the seven principal tuna species are estimated to be fished at biologically unsustainable levels. Now, to underline the importance of its conservation, so systems can be put in place to prevent tuna stock from crashing. The UN General um, Assembly in December of um, 2020, 2016 voted to officially observe a World Tuna Day, and the date was um, chosen to be May the 2nd. Do you love tuna? Um, I do. Um, not so much. As well, I don't eat it so much now. Um, we don't really have a... Uh, would I not say a culture? You know, when we talk about canned fish in Nigeria, mm. we talk about sardines. That's more readily accessible than um, tuna. But I mean, the chicken of the sea, right? It's it's, it's delicious. It's healthy. It's chunky. Um, <laughs> it's chunky. <laughs> well, depending on how you buy it, it can be chunky, it can be flaky. But I mean, it's just the fish that I've always known to be like canned fish, and it's it's there. It's always in the cupboard. I'm not a fan of tuna like that. So the fish I like, I like my sardine. I like the titles. Yeah, you know, I like the sardine. I also like sal uh, salmon. So mm. those are the two real. So, I mean, sardine, I can eat it anyway. If it's yeah. in the can, I eat it. If it's fresh, I eat it. You yeah. know? So and I think tuna fish fresh well. is a lot better than canned. But mm. canned is what is more readily um, available. available. But that combination for me of tuna with mayonnaise and sweet corn, like, like we grew up on it. So mm -hmm. I'm used to I want UK um, ass. <laughs> But, um, I want London, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, it, at one point it was really bad in terms of crisis, um, the way it was being fished. And, mm -hmm. and I think now, um, I can't remember if it's illegal to fish it. And it, it's some, farmed. Yeah, some areas yes, as well, illegal, yes. But yeah, most of, it, most of what we consume now yeah, is farmed. Farm, yeah. So it's more sustainable. Absolutely. Okay, so what do you find personally in news? Uh, sadly, 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 um, I wish this was not a story that we were taking today, but as we were celebrating Workers' Day um, yesterday, my headline reads, Death Toll Rises to Eight in Lagos Building Collapse. So um, on Sunday in the uh, Ibatemeta area of Lagos State, Ibadan Street, uh, a building collapsed, sadly, and um, as of this story um, going out, um, eight bodies had been recovered, thankfully about 23 more. Um, had been rescued and taken to the various um, hospitals for treatment in, in various states of health. Um, uh, apparently, the, the key thing for me was that, you know, it's the, the building was um, a three-story building that had actually been marked, marked for demolition. We hear so this all the time. It, it was due for demolition, but the residents were still in there. Um, just in the same way, another three-story building, a couple of, um, on a different street, also scheduled for um, demo, uh, for demolition, but still had the residents living in there. So that building apparently has also now been evacuated. But it's just sad to, I mean, the Lagos State, uh, NEMA um, and LESEMA have done uh, what they're supposed to do in terms of being there quickly to manage the process, you know, evacuations and retrieve the bodies and all of that. But I mean, for me, what is most sad, like I said, is the fact that one, lives were lost, and two, that we see you know, repeat occurrences of this happening all the time. And it takes me back to the question that says, look, on an average, what's the average lifespan of a building? 30 years, 50 years, 100 years? There are buildings that have been standing in other parts of the world for 200 years, maybe. So hmm. the fact is, 800 years, why, I saw one in France. Why do we have these buildings that seem not to be able to withstand the test of time? Um, is it the building materials? Is it the building process? Is it that it's not taking into account the various factors we deal with, like, you know, the wind, the weather? There's so many things, but I life can tell you for free in such lost. areas, mm. right, Uti. Um, so I remember when we were building the bungalow, mm -hmm. my dad, did the foundation, when, you know, when my, um, someone saw the foundation and said, ah, this is too much. Mm. It's just a bungalow. Why are you building a foundation that is this heavy yeah. that can actually take two floors? And my dad says, you know how people get tired of property? 
yeah people get tired on the street or, 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 or and say they want to upgrade their building mm. and automatically just add floors add without floors testing the foundation yeah. so i can tell you for free that buildings like this were probably like a, a bungalow or something that just had a decking then over time they kept on raising mm. the, the building to the floors number of floors that it it had you know so for me it's just it's just so tiring that we see this and again so if a is if an official comes to mark the building are they marking the building to collect bribe or they're actually marking buildings to for the safety of the occupants mm. of those buildings because what i see happen all the time is that i see all these people come with the big um, paint or whatever to mark the x then you go behind you okay. pay them some bribe and they you know th that's what well, happens so, I mean, so you're not really you're not really marking that building you say you know what this is not safe for you i i need you to evacuate this place now but so they can be demolished. If I mark the building for demolition, there's responsibility. So clearly there's a flaw in the process because there is the fact that it's marked. Is there a time frame within which a marked building should be demolished? Is there, I mean, we already know that we have corruption problems. So the whole bribing and going behind. But the fact is the people who have died in this, right? If you had the opportunity to save your life. Because also to, they are ignorant. They don't believe that these well, things so would that's fall. A, that's the thing. So the fact is there's a responsibility on every side, right? That even when the building, so it would have been worse if the building wasn't marked for demolition. So we've mm. even identified that this building is a problem. Now, the minute a building is marked for demolition, would you be in the building? But there are various, I wouldn't be there in the various factors, right, that go there's into poverty, this conversation. There's poverty, there's a lot of things. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. There are various factors because if I have nowhere else to go and this is the only roof I have over my head, then perhaps that's what I'll say, look, I'll take my chances. Well, I think there should be consequences, right? Who are the Lagos State officials that marked that building? Why did they not report it when there was well, no evacuation? Well, it depends on what the process Let, is. Yeah, so, so I'm just saying that it may not necessarily be consequences in this case, right? It may be a review of the process because if the building, for example, if your process says, look, once a building is marked, you have six months to demolish it and it mm. falls within six months. It, the it person has nobody, done their yeah, work, right? Yeah. But it's about, so it's about understanding what the, the process is, what actually happened in this situation. But more importantly for me, even if you're punishing somebody, it doesn't bring back the dead. Mm. What is more important is to find a process that works, that protects Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And, and when lives. they mark a building, please, for goodness sake, just leave. Mm. I know people will say there's poverty. Where would they go to and all of that? But now... You'd rather that be you, alive. Yeah, you'd rather be alive than, you know, Absolutely. be dead. So, talking about consequences, so... Fans that vandalize the stadium in Abuja after the failure of the Super Eagles to qualify the 2022, uh, what's it called, um, World Cup, right? Mm -hmm. The world football body, FIFA, on Monday, fined Nigeria about 63.9 million following the violence that occurred at the Moshud Abiola um, National Stadium in Abuja. Um, so I'm happy about this. Mm -hmm. Yes, we just it will just teach us to have have sense. <laughs> well, again, I don't know that it will teach us to have sense mm. because the the football is a game of, of emotions. No, it's not hooliganism. Game of hooliganism. Don't, <laughs> don't come for me, but I mean that's what it is. But there was no rhyme or reason to this violence that occurred. For me, in fact, I thought the fine was low. Mm. I thought it would be a lot. Funny thing, um, they are even giving them room for an appeal. Yeah, exactly. So but it means I, that they I can actually that, appeal this fine. Yeah, so I thought that the fine was low, but of course, it was a specific violation. So the fact that they couldn't provide security, mm -hmm. they couldn't prevent the fans from getting onto the pitch. So I, I, I think that it highlights the things and the, the processes that they need to fix or the changes that they need to make. But what was key for me, and this is why I said football is a game of hooliganism, at the end of the story, it just says about 45 countries mm. have been fined it throughout this process of World Cup qualifiers. So no, it's not just it's us. It's not us. Of <laughs> course, <laughs> right? we, no. So, just so you yes, know that. We just like to flog that, our own, um, that's all. But it's not that, a Nigerian um, thing. Uh, exactly, that football, uh, uh, exactly. In Manchester. There was one time I was in London. Mm -hmm. Eh, come and see fight at the mm -hmm. street. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you so, run so for your just, life. I'm just trying to give context. That is for hooliganism. You know, but the, the, the <laughs> reality it? of it is, ah, um, it oh was sad. Well, it I don't know what is with, what is the fever behind football that somebody will be running with ball and all your energy, you know, your ginger, the, your adrenaline. The worst <laughs> part of it for me is, 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 is very rich men <laughs> running around chasing a ball. <laughs> then poor men, are, oh, oh, like... <laughs> Excuse me, I don't understand it. All right. <laughs> well, no, no, let's take a break. When we come back from the break, we want to be discussing looking beyond um, presidency for the 2023 election. Stay with us, we'll be right back.